In this video I'll be showing you how you can use GeoPro to construct a three-dimensional polyhedron. In the manual on page uh, 47 there are a whole lot of formulas and instructions for polyhedron. So what I'm going to do today is the truncated octahedron. It has a formula S6H8 which means six squares and eight hexagons are required. So I need some card. I use 180 GSM card. You can use scraps of card. They don't have to be a4 pages, just whatever you've got around. And I start drawing from shape 53 on GeoPro. And I press firmly because I've got a score lines for folding tabs. Now I space the shapes about a centimetre apart. So when you draw the next one, just make sure it's about a centimetre from the nearest point on the last shape. And keep drawing. Now that I've finished drawing the hexagons, I need to draw the other shape, the square, six of those. I'm just using a scrap of card that I had and I'm going to draw the six squares. Again, pressing firmly and spacing by about a centimetre. Now I'm ready to start cutting out the shapes. If I start with the squares, you can see why I left a centimetre gap so that when I cut down between the shapes, I've got a five millimetre margin from the drawn shape. And I'll just trim the squares like so. Same with the hexagons. I cut down between them. So I've got about a five millimetre border of space from where I've drawn. I'll just roughly cut them into sections like this. Now that I've cut out the hexagons, I need to trim the five millimetre margin around the side of each shape. It doesn't have to be exact. But, uh, something like that. I'll keep doing that on the hexagons. I don't have to do it on the squares because they've already got a nice five millimeter margin all the way around. Now I need to start forming the tabs around each shape. I'll start with a square. You can often just do one cut across the corner like that and work your way around the shape forming the tabs. Just skim the corners. We don't want to go into the shape. So I'll do the squares like that. And the hexagons, again, I could probably just cut straight across there or in and out a little bit if you need to until I've gone all the way around the perimeter, like so. Now that I've cut the tab shapes, I need to actually fold the tabs up. And that's why I scored the lines. I can then use my thumb, apply a little bit of pressure and fold the tabs so that they'll be on the inside of the model. So I fold them in this direction. The same with the hexagons. I fold the tabs down towards the marked inclines and the scoring should mean that they fold fairly well. If you have uh, thicker cardboard, you might need to use the edge of a pen or something like that to press down and create a sharp edge. So I'll continue folding the tabs down. Now that I've got my tabs folded up, I'm ready to start constructing the model. Notice that uh, there's a square around every second edge of the hexagon. I can follow that pattern. You can refer to page 47 in the GeoPro manual for sketches of what the completed models look like and follow those patterns as well. Okay, now I use an acrylic here quick set glue and I'll put a small dob on a pad of paper or a bit of scrap card and I use a bamboo skewer that's had its point cut off and use that to apply glue to one edge of one of the shapes. Just spread a very thin smear there and hold the shapes together. I use my thumb to ensure that they're at the same level And you can turn it over and pinch the tabs together to ensure they're firmly connected. Now I'll continue to do that around every second edge of the first hexagon. You can see I've put a square around each or every second edge of the first hexagon now. Next stage, and the corner pattern remember was SHH, so I need a second hexagon at each corner like that. So I'll start to glue those into position. 
Now I've completed putting all the shapes around the outside of the first hexagon and that will be the completed shape pattern at a vertex like that. So I need to join in between here. So I get a bit of glue and again a thin smear. Well, it's a bit too much but I can take some off and hold it together probably for five to ten seconds until things are secure. Now you might be tempted to do this side here, but that's an opposing tension on the shape. It's better just to leave one pair of edges in one area gluing together and move on to another section, move around this way. So I'll go around and do this one, then this one, then I'll come back and this one should be dry and I can have a go in here. You can see I've still got gaps in here to complete. Now I've sealed those gaps. I've got to this stage. Next I'll start putting hexagons in here and I'll work my way around and eventually get pretty close to completing the model. You can see I've nearly completed the, the uh, model but I'm down to the last two edges and we do those together because it's hard to get at one edge only. So I'll just put some glue on each edge and you can put a bit of tension on the shape to make the uh, tabs more accessible. Then just gently push that into position from both sides, not too hard. Whoops. I'll pull it back out a bit. That's better. And hold that to complete the model. So there's our completed truncated octahedron.